Hi, welcome to the More Gem Show. I'm Steve Moriarty, your host, and with us tonight are my two sons, uh, Michael, who's in charge of this production. Hello, Michael. Hello, everybody. And Jeffrey, who will be handling uh, the moderating of the chat. Hey, everybody. And uh, Jeff, if you can tell them how to view the chat and how they can purchase. Yes. So if you're watching, well, I guess everybody's watching on YouTube right now. Um, if you do log into your account on YouTube, sometimes it's just your Google account, you can join the chat. Um, we have some fun in there, and there's a lot of questions, and some other people answer them and everything, so definitely log in if you can. Um, so on tonight's show, if you do want to purchase anything, you can go to moregems.com. I'm going to be placing links you know, in the comments section quite a bit. Um, and there's a green bar at the top of the site that will link you to the category with all the stones. Um, and uh, do we want to talk about the, uh, what was the coupon code, Michael? Do we want to say what that is? Fall 15. Fall 15. Coupon code is fall 15. Is so this, 15% off. Yeah. Is the summer over? Is this the first day of fall yet? Yeah, it's been, yeah, we're into fall. Already, huh? Yeah. Was it? I missed it. I missed it. Okay. So fall 15. 15% off, and you can um, purchase with credit card. You can purchase with PayPal. And we even have financing um, run through Sezzle on our website. So, well, Is there a limit on that financing? I think it's like $2,500. $2,500. Yes. So. so almost everything's available yeah. financing. And you can do... Uh, uh, we do layaway. Layaway. Yeah, which you'll have to call tomorrow to set up a layaway. But uh, we definitely can do that. And it's it's good for six months. And we like to get regular payments uh, with 20% down. Uh, but you can carry it out over six months. Okay. And, and also, a lot of the gemstones tonight, um, some people do ask this, but we can custom design jewelry for sure. it. Okay. Yeah, so if you want to call tomorrow, we can work on custom design a piece. Uh, uh, and how about the stones from the last show? It's been three weeks now because we were on vacation, so it's been a while. Uh, but still, the stones from our last show are available. What was the coupon code for that one? Mix 15. Mix 15. So it was Mix 15. So you can go into... more moregems.com and there is a link for um, past gem shows it's just a navigational link click on the navigation you'll see the show from i think the second or the third of september it'll show the date and then just use the coupon code mix 15 for those so all those uh well we sold quite a few of them but uh, there are still several available um one of them has changed it's morphed since then but um, which is a tanzanite, which we'll see tonight. Uh, it didn't sell. It's one of the bigger tanzanites we have, and um, I heated it. Um, it was interesting as a, a natural, but it didn't really have a dramatic uh, uh, color that I like to see in the natural. So heat it, and then it came out very nice, and we'll see it later. Perfect. Okay. All right. Uh, anything else we need to talk about? Um, yeah. Talk about... Some oh, highlights. Some news. News. <laughs> some gem news. Yes. So I think uh, just because this one's kind of close to us. I get, what was it? 500 miles? 600 miles? I don't know. Yeah. It's like a 10-hour drive. Or, okay. But so close. Kind of kind of cool, which is a Crater of Diamonds Park um, in uh, Arkansas. Yes. So the only diamond mine in the country. So, and... Yeah. What what did they find, Jeffrey? I believe they found a, or he, uh, his name was uh, Kevin. Kevin Kennard, uh, 33 years old, found a 9.7 carat brown diamond, which he named the Kennard Friendship Diamond. So... It's so, a pretty good find. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it, it's brown, which is not the highest value for a diamond. But uh, as you can see, it's a nine carat. And looking at it, you know, if it were completely clean, maybe it would cut somewhere between a three and four carat uh, diamond, which could be, you know, twenty, thirty thousand. You know, it just depends on the color. You know, in browns, the secondary color is really a key to its value. You know, if it has some pinks or 
um, some other color than just straight brown, uh, it has a much greater value than than uh, than as that picture shows kind of looks straight brown. So depending on the clarity and and just what the final color is, um, you know the value could be significant. So it's one of the bigger stones. I don't know was it the second largest they found second, down there. Yep. Yeah. I think the first one was 16 carats. So so pretty big diamond. So it is a place that you can go and and mine. You know, you just pay a fee. I think they're limiting the amount of people that can go in right now. But uh, if you call ahead and make an appointment uh, to, uh, to go and you can search the field. You know, he got lucky because um, they had just plowed. And then with one of the hurricanes that came through, they had huge rains. So, so it just washed all the dirt and, and freed up the diamond. And he was just uh, searching the surface and he found this on the surface of the ground. So big find. Yeah, cool. Yeah. Uh, good job, Kevin. <laughs> and I think the other big news was um, something I don't know if my wife would be happy or sad about. But um, so Louis Vuitton and Tiffany, their kind of merger is falling through, I think. Uh, yeah. Um, Louis Vuitton was buying Tiffany's um, for $16 billion dollars. Um, was the most expensive deal in luxury uh, industry ever, I think. Um, but now, because of COVID, I think Louis Vuitton is trying to back out or trying to negotiate the deal. I think they're going to court over it, and <clears throat> you know, because uh, they obviously um, Tiffany's business was affected by COVID uh, because their business is very reliant on tourism. And of course, there is no tourism, so I don't know how much it affected their their business. But uh, Louis Vuitton wants either a better deal or out of the deal. I'm not sure which. Uh, I really hadn't realized Louis Vuitton was so big that they could buy Tiffany's for 16 billion. But apparently, those thousand, five thousand dollar purses uh, mm -hmm. bring good money. My wife knew they were that. Yes, big. yes, your wife loves Louis Vuitton. She's As not, many people do. She's yeah. not allowed to buy Tiffany. You cannot buy <laughs> Tiffany if she you're buy the son yeah, of a yeah, jeweler. She'd be in trouble for that. But Louis Vuitton, that's fine. No, yeah. no <laughs> Tiffany in our house. So. Okay. Only Moriarty in our house. <laughs> so that's pretty much it for the news this week. I think so. Okay. Um, you know, the, the way we're pricing tonight, uh, you know, we have a, an appraised price on on things, you know, like, like this one, the uh, appraised or normal price 3920 and that's based on the pricing given in the gem guide uh, which is a industry um, well, it's a market driven independent pricing guide um, done by Richard Drucker um, where they go to the trade shows particularly Tucson and, and some of the other big trade shows and they go out and actually price stones from dealers and and they base the prices in this book uh, which is a wholesale guide um, based on on what they see at the shows uh, so it, it is a very helpful guide for people that do appraisals or or people that are, are buying colored stones and you know it's helpful to uh, put an actual price on, on what people are asking for things because many of these stones are rare enough that we don't see them often enough uh, to really get a, a full feel for what the pricing is. So so that normal price is based on the recommendations of the GEM guide and a markup for retail. Um, so that's where we get that price. Uh, the sale price is, is our regular price and tonight we'll take 15% off that. So the sale price of 1170 on this aquamarine uh take 15 percent off and you're down to 995. Uh, so again the first stone uh tonight is this aquamarine i just finished it up this morning um it is a 9.8 carat uh nice long emerald cut um I think this one, just a, a little bit of inclusion in it, uh, you know, but just really a pretty color actually came out better than I expected. Uh, still has some of the natural green uh, that we like to see in aquamarine. 
Um, may not be heated. I don't really know whether this has been heated or not, but usually when you heat them, the green goes away and just leaves a blue color, which uh, most aquamarine is heated uh, to drive off the green because typically the green is not very attractive. Uh, but in this case, it, it just really adds a, a beautiful look to the color of this blue in the stone. Uh, so this stone is over an inch long. Um, you know, this is a style of cut that uh, many people have a great deal of difficulty with it because of the long facets and, and difficult to polish it. But I've never found it real difficult to, to do these. And this one came out real nice for me. Um, so, um, get it. so been three weeks and I'm forgetting the protocol here. Yeah. See if it shows up better on. So th this comes from Nigeria, uh, and and again weighs uh, nine carat eighty. Uh, well, you know, this is a typical shape for aquamarine. Um, don't see them a lot, and, and these long shapes really do well in custom designs. Uh, you don't have to do anything too dramatic to them to make a different look. Uh, we've done many, many pieces in, in these long shapes. They've sold very well. Um, you know, you can do them just very simply. You can accent the top. Um, there, there's quite a few ways that you can do this, but uh, no matter what you do, you get a unique look. And we've even made rings with this long of, of stone. It's about knuckle to knuckle, but, uh, you know, it, it just uh, makes a nice, pretty ring also. And uh, up next, another stone we just finished. Uh, this is scapolite. Uh, scapolite is a... a a stone that uh, comes from Tanzania. Uh, this is in a Portuguese round. One of my least favorite cuts to do, but one of our most saleable cuts. It's just so many facets. It just uh, can drive you nuts having to polish so many facets. You know, you cut it, and then you recut it, and then you polish it, and when there's 145 facets, that puts us up to... 440 times you have to <laughs> uh, polish and cut each one of these. So it's a little bit monotonous, but uh, really has a great effect. I, I mean, it spirals. Uh, people like the looks of it, and, and Portuguese always sells for us. You know, scapolite is uh, a stone, again, from Tanzania. Um, its uh, hardness is six and a half to seven. There's a lot of uh, misinformation on uh, online about it, saying it's five and a half to six. And then I found books that say six to six and a half. Uh, my understanding is six and a half to seven. And uh, using my hardness test kit, which that's what this is, um, it really appears close to seven but I'll go with six and a half to seven on the hardness. You know, the hardness test kit uh, is just all these points that have uh, different hardness on it. This one is six and seven, and it barely scratched with seven, you know, and, and I have a piece of quartz. You know, I took this crystal and, can we get back up? Uh, so, so what you do, you you basically just try and scratch the the surface of it. That's scapolite, of course. This is scapolite. So this is leaving a, a mark, but it's actually the mark of the, yeah, let's see. You know, it, it's somewhere really close to this seven because it's, most of it just rubs off. If I push hard enough, maybe I can get it to scratch. 
So six and a half to seven is, is where this goes. And if you do this six on it, it just runs across it and really does nothing. So somewhere six and a half to seven is the hardness. So a, a wearable stone um, and just a, a beautiful color. This one has a really nice yellow color to it. Uh, 550 is our sale price. Uh, and with 15% off, you're $468 on this with the coupon code uh, FALL15. Can you put it on your finger? Sure. Maybe. Maybe. If I can. It's always hard for me to... Hmm. <laughs> So someone did mention they saw us on Reddit. So I was going to say, I know you don't like doing Portuguese cuts, but that seems to the ones that go viral all the time. Yes. On yeah, we've gone on Reddit uh, several times, and, and this Portuguese cut's gone viral. I don't know how many. Michael just put it up today, and how many views it's up to? Uh, quite a few. I'm not sure. Quite, like 12,000 uploads. 12,000 uploads and 300. Uh, uploads. Uploads. Not uploads. <laughs> up uploads. Oh, that would take a long time. <laughs> What? It's all right. Uploads. Uploads. Right. Upvotes. Upvotes. Uh, Upvotes. Up yes. I got yes. it. Yes. Yeah, I don't really understand Reddit. Uh -huh. So, well, you know, but we've had several viral, um, you know, that have gone into the millions, yeah. videos that have gone into the millions of views. And this one looks like it could hit over a million. I don't know. Yeah, only time will tell. Keep looking at it. Tell people to keep looking at it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. It's a cool cut, though. That's one of my yeah. favorite cuts. Yeah, yeah it, it's, it just mounts real well. This is a nice size uh, for ring or pendant. Um, and, and just uh, very appealing to the wearer. You know, when you sit there and look at the stone, it just spirals in. Uh, you know, just a really a, a dramatic cut. Just a great brilliance to the stone. <clears throat> and this for scapolite is a nice deep color. Uh, scapolite's usually pretty pale. Um, not many stones that have this yellow color that are available in the business, particularly in this size. You know, we have sapphire that's yellow like this, and citrine generally doesn't get this kind of yellow. You know, it's usually more golden color. Uh, so this is really a beautiful color. These come from Tanzania. Um, it's been available for the last couple years. And before that, I had, you know, the last time I saw it was back in the, in the late 80s. You know, it was available again from Tanzania. So it's been a, a long absent from, from the trade. So. Okay. It's really beautiful stone. Yeah, caught my eye this morning. All right. And up next is a tanzanite. Um, you ready? <laughs> Come on, All Michael. Right, Michael's sleeping there. Uh, no, I was thinking about the uh, scaffold. <laughs> you can't have it. <laughs> so, so this is a tanzanite I cut. It weighs 2.25 carat, um, of course, from Tanzania. Um, and, and this is uh, really an attractive cut. It's uh, basically an emerald cut just with rounded ends. It's a step style cut, uh, but the color is just really nice. And, uh, and it has a, a nice life to it. You know, I like how emerald cuts work with tanzanite. They accent the color really well. So this is a stone that's uh, 1015 and with 15 off, it's $863. You know, good size for a ring. Just make a beautiful ring. So hopefully we'll get back to Tanzania here in the next six months or so, I'd like to think. Uh, kind of got... Michael and Jeff committed to a trip. I gotta get my passport. Yeah, you better be getting that passport. So hopefully, uh, you know, who knows when it's going to happen. Yeah, I'm sure it won't be for 
less than six months probably. Um, but we'll hope for the best and love to get back. You know, right now the market for tanzanite's uh, really good. I've been buying a lot of tanzanite. The prices are better. Um, you know, you get a stone, uh, typically tanzanites in the, the six, seven hundred a carat, and now you can buy stones uh, in the five, six hundred, and sometimes less. So we've got lots of tanzanite, and I think it's it's really a good time to buy it just because the colors are so good. I mean, they're they're better than I've ever seen in my time in the business. You know, the availability right now is is just better than than uh, what it's been. Up next is uh, another scapolite. Uh, this stone I cut into a, a barium style square. Um, weighs 18.32 carats. So just really nice life to the stone. You know, squares like this just cut really well and give you great brilliance. You know, things that are one to one proportion will always be more brilliant than other cuts. Uh, and this style of cut works really well. You know, again, the, the color's really nice. And just this Barian style works works really well with this scapolite. Nice basket on this. You know, this is done by a new uh, designer for us. Uh, Johnny Vinay has has been uh, starting to do some work for us. Uh, we were so busy that uh, hard to um, get all the work done we need to. Uh, so we're getting Chris some help uh, with another designer, and working out very well for us. Yeah, you know, just a, a nice simple piece, but but has some uh, some detail to it that. Uh, really accents this stone from the side. It doesn't need any help from the top because it's just so brilliant. A simple pendant on it or a simple bale, movable bale, so you'll get a lot of movement when you wear it. So this piece 2370 and with the 15 off, uh, you'll be 2015 on this piece. All 14 karat gold. You know, and right now gold is at an all-time high. Um, it's, uh, I think it's dropped a little bit. Uh, it's down to just under $1,900 an ounce. Um, but uh, um, COVID has had uh, its effect on the price of gold also. And we have a question. Yeah, this is um, back to the tanzanite. You know, you mentioned that um, you're getting some good pricing on tanzanite. A few people are wondering, you know, um, why do you see that happening with like the limited access to the mines right now and the traveling? Wouldn't that cause prices to go up? Or, well, you know, it, it prices have already changed. You know, I've talked to two people in the last two weeks where prices are back up because people are starting to travel. Tanzania opened again. You know, when you have a, a, a close-up of when there's nobody traveling, nobody buying, you know, Africa has always been a place that uh, if sales are good, prices are high. I've been in Tanzania where I could buy in New York City cheaper than I could buy in Tanzania. You know, that's because their business is very good and they just fluctuate immediately with how business is. And business dropped dead, so... You know, people that were sitting on goods had to turn them, and uh, it just forced the price down significantly. You know, we knew it'd be temporary, you know, and what people are talking about now. I've talked to a friend who's in uh, Thailand right now and, and another who travels regularly. He says, well, that, that price differential has already changed, so it's already on, on the way back up. And that's because Tanzania opened back up uh, maybe a month ago okay. or so. You know, so people are starting to travel. There are people willing to take the risks, like my son, Jeffrey, <laughs> who nothing's going to stop him from traveling. You know, and if I were single and I wasn't worried about my wife getting sick, I'd, I'd be in Tanzania now. I mean, there's no question about I, it. I'm not single, though. 
No, you're not single. <laughs> but but your wife likes to travel, and Amy, you have. I both, don't know what he's you, talking about. Yeah, you you both have uh, yes. uh, similar feelings about travel, and and you know, willing to take the risk because you can't stand not traveling. You know, I feel a lot the same, but I have greater risk at home, and you know, I just can't do it. You know, but uh, Tanzania is where I want to be, and you know, I wish I could have been there, and wish I. And we will be back, you know, so it'll happen again. And fortunately, I've got two sons committed to going, so we've never been there together. So it'll be a, an interesting trip when we do go. So, And uh, up next is uh, a Zircon. This comes to us from Mozambique. Um, you know, we've done really, really well with uh, Zircon, particularly this color. You know, these imperial zircons, uh, named imperial after imperial topaz, um, you know, they like to give names to things that look similar, particularly things that have a greater value. Uh, imperial topaz in this kind of size and color is probably in the 2,000 a carat range. Um, so they, instead of just calling a peach zircon, they call it imperial zircon. Um, so zircon, it's Big value is in its brilliance. I mean, it has very high refractive index. Um, one of the highest of all the colored stones you're going to see tonight. It is the highest. Um, and, and that leads to very high brilliance. And this stone is a, a very brilliant stone. Comes to us from Mozambique. Mozambique will typically, typically be a little more pink than what you'll see out of Tanzania. Tanzania has nice peach colors, and, you know, unfortunately, they've become much more difficult to get. Um, hopefully, I'll have some more here in the next few weeks, But because um, these zircons do very well for us. They're, they're just a really a great seller. You know, peach colors are my favorite, and many people just love the colors of, of peach. You know, peach you'll find not only in imperial zircon, uh, the rarest sapphire is Piperacea sapphire, which is a similar type of color. Uh, pink orange to orange pink is what what uh, uh, Piperacea is categorized, and and they are very similar to what this look is. So this is a nice big stone, weighs uh, seven point seven seven carat. Whoa, lucky stone! Uh, you gamblers out there, this is the one you want to wear. Um, so it's a uh, thirteen hundred and twenty bucks, uh, less fifteen percent puts that stone at eleven $1 hundred and twenty-two dollars. Uh, so price per carat, this will be the least expensive uh, gem of this color that you can buy. You know, and, and it also is a good hard stone. You know, zircon has a, a higher hardness than many of the stones you're going to see tonight. So it's a really wearable stone. So this is. A variation of a Portuguese cut doesn't have as many facets. Uh, can't quite see what, but it is a, a Portuguese style all the way through, just, just fewer rows of facets. But just really, really a lovely stone. And our next stone is... A natural tanzanite. Uh, this one I finished this week. Um, again, uh, naturals have sold real well for us. These bigger stones in naturals a little slower because of the high expense, and you know it's it's not what we typically expect from tanzanite. These natural colors, but we've had very good success selling naturals. So we'll always offer them as natural first because you can always heat them. You know this will heat to a really beautiful color. Um, the next stone we're going to show you are the one one that we had last week as natural, and and I heated it this week, so you can see the kind of change, and and this one has a, a really lovely color to it, you know, a lot of purples in it, uh, you know, and and just a, a wide variety of color um, that you don't see in in tanzanite typically. Yeah, the the video here is what you see outdoors. You see much more violet out, outside. You know, it's much like uh, uh, the blue form. You know, as you go from one light to another, you see a significant difference in the color. Uh, 
So and this is one I'm sure is just going to heat to a beautiful color. So if it doesn't sell by the time uh, we do our next show, I'll, I'll probably heat it for the next show. Just because, you know, we blue is what most people expect. And when you're into a stone that this one, uh, the sale price on it is about $8,600. Um, so selling naturals in this price range, although we have done it, I sold a 42 carat natural. Um, you know, it, it, uh, they're typically a little slower. They sell better as blue, but we've had really, really good success at selling naturals. Um, particularly in the three, four, five carat sizes, people just about buy everything we do is natural. Unfortunately, most of them don't show a pretty color as natural. It's just maybe one in twenty or so would uh, would ha have a worthy color that people would like it natural. Mostly, they're just kind of brownish and you know no secondary colors that, like what you see in this. So you just heat those up because there's they're just not going to sell as a natural, you know. But this has got a, a really a good color for natural, and I think it's it's saleable as natural. So we'll give it a few weeks, and if not, we'll heat it up, and you know, and that's an option you have when you buy a natural. You know, you, they're always you know one day away from being a blue stone. You know, you throw it in the oven and cook it overnight, and and uh, which we would provide that service to anybody that decided down the line that, yeah, I've seen it as natural. Now let's have it as blue and uh, no problem doing that. This is a step cushion cut. You know, it's all step cut. You know, I do a lot of step cuts, uh, particularly deeper, deeper pieces of rough. It uses the rough more efficiently when you cut a step cut. You know, it's it's easier to cut a deeper cut and and have it be fully brilliant. And the next stone up is one that was natural last year or last year, last show. Which is there's the natural color. Uh, this we we showed uh, at our last show. And this is a 28 karat 51, so it's a big Portuguese round. And this year, this week, this is what it looks like. So it really heated to be a beautiful stone. And in this case, probably better blue than it was natural. But, uh, you know, you can see that uh, these natural colors really, really heat well. So this one is mostly blue, you know, high percentage blue. Now that's really a beautiful tanzanite. You know, big rounds like this used to be really, really difficult to get. You know, we see them a, a little more these days because people are kind of focusing, realizing that these big rounds do sell well. But you can see the Portuguese style. This is uh, not as many facets on the back because it wasn't as deep a piece of rough. So instead of having five rows of facets, it only has three. Uh, but the top is, a, I think, one, two, three, four, four. So the top is a full Portuguese crown on it. You know, and, and it still worked to give you that spiraling brilliance. And what a color. Very happy with this stone. You know, when you heat them, you don't know exactly what you're going to get. I got a pretty good idea generally, but, uh, you know, this came out. It was beyond my expectations for sure. Um, just really a, a beautiful stone. So this one weighs 28.51 carat. Uh, 19.2 was our sale price. And with 15 off, it's 16,300 which is about 570 a carat. You know, just uh, early this year, this would have been more in the 7 750 a carat range. So the price is better than it has been. And again, I see the future. Um, soon as COVID's over, the price going up dramatically uh, because of all the steps the government has taken to um, restrict the, the exports. 
um, by walling off the tanzanite mines and and uh, now setting up bourses, which are offices where all business needs to be, all tanzanite business needs to be traded in the offices. Um, so they're trying to restrict uh, all the export out of the mines and keep it from going across the border into Kenya and being exported, where they didn't get any tax on, on, the, on the goods. So just the tax should increase probably 5% the price, and uh, just all this restriction you know, is, is going to make a difference in the price in the future. And our next stone is a molly garnet. I don't get these very often. Um, kind of a, a unique color in the business. Um, uh, molly garnets uh, uh, really have a high dispersion. If you look at the, the picture of, of this stone, the video, you can see all the spectral colors coming out of it. So um, just really is an attractive type of garnet. Um, this stone particularly shows well in, uh, in daylight, uh, really much deeper green than what you see in incandescent. Um, the video is kind of representative of, of what daylight would be. Um, and I don't know if the picture is any different, but, but the daylight color on the stone is really dramatic. You know, it, it's almost approaching savorite. It's not savorite green, but uh, really is a, a deep green color. Maybe deep green is a little overstated, but yeah. So th this is more what you're going to see in incandescent. And, and when you go to daylight, it'll be a, a much more deeper green. But, but you can see the dispersion which is break up a white light in the spectral colors. You know, it just has very nice dispersion. Looks a little like a sphene, uh, but it's harder and, uh, you know, a more durable stone than sphene will ever be. How much metal is this thing? Thick. Um, I think pretty much any. I any? don't know about rose. I'm not sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, white would probably make it. Yeah, white shows up, but but yeah, yeah I think white or yellow yeah. works. Yeah. yeah, I like that uh, stuff. Yeah, I do too. You know, this one just finished this morning, also. Um, I like that price too. Yeah, 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 a little more affordable for people. You know, four hundred fifty bucks is the price, and uh, so three hundred eighty-two dollars. You know, this is a, a stone that uh, there's very few on the market. Uh, you just don't see molly garnets. Um, I've had few, uh, you know, I bought five pieces of rough. I think two of them were problems, and, and I've had success cutting two, and I've got one more to cut. Um, so hopefully I'll see more molly garnets. They don't come big. You know, typically this is about as big as you see, maybe occasionally a three-carat. Um, I'd like to see a big one. Yeah. So not a large stone, because garnet's pretty dense. So you don't get a big look, but in a ring, it's going to make a really attractive ring. Nope, if I can find it. So again, it's a step cut. Uh, and it worked really well for this stone. It was a nightmare to cut. Um, it was just really, really difficult just dealing with inclusions, getting rid of them, and um, popped off the dop on me, which is the worst thing that can happen to you. And that's, that's the, the holder that holds it in the machine, and, and it popped off. So fortunately, there was still a good imprint, and I could glue it back where it was, but um, created issues for me, as, as there are many issues when you cut and... You know, popping off the dop is by far the worst issue. You know, one of these days when I lose one again for you cutters out there, I'll try and show you how to get back to where you were. You know, sometimes you just have to start over, but sometimes you get lucky and, and you can get it back in position and, and it'll it'll cut for you. But um, we'll do a video on that uh, the next time I pop one off. You know, fortunately it doesn't happen too often, but... Uh, 
I mean, what? Uh, I don't know. We had two of them this week. Michael had one. Michael's problem was uh, it was high polished where you're glued to and it doesn't hold as well. Um, sometimes it's old glue. Um, so I, I, it just, uh, sometimes you have too much glue on it and as soon as you start cutting on the glue, if, if it's hanging over the edge of the stone and, and you start cutting on the glue, just the vibration on the glue itself uh, can cause it to break loose. And that, that's the biggest problem. You know, you, you get too much glue, it's hanging over the edge, and the machine uh, starts cutting on glue, and it just uh, pulls it enough that it, it pulls it free from the stone. Mm -hmm. So, but it's it's a few swear words every time it happens. You know, so. Those are different types. Someone's asking about using waxes versus glue or... Well, I mean, it's a problem. It's whether you use wax or whether you use uh, uh, glue. You know, the one glue that doesn't seem to have the issue is super glue. You know, but uh, the problem I have with super glue, it takes so much heat to break the bond that I always worry about breaking the stone by applying too much heat. You know, if I could find a super glue that uh, um, broke at a lower temperature, I'd probably use it more often. You know, there are some ways of using super glue that I think about, but but I, I've done epoxy so long, and I'm happy with with how I work with epoxies that uh, it seems to work best for me. But uh, super glue is when you break one loose, it is the savior um, using super glue to, to bond it back because you generally have an impression of the old glue, and with super glue you can... It's not thick and and it hardens up quickly. So it, it's it's what you use to to put a stone that's broken away from the top. It's what you use to put it back. So thank you. Okay, that was good. <laughs> um, next stone up is another opal. You know we've been doing a lot of opals because we love opals. Uh, this is a black opal. Um, blacks are anything that's gray and beyond darker base color is generally what a black is and Ethiopia does produce some nice blacks um, you know on the high end they don't compete with what Australia produces in blacks uh, but but they do have some beautiful stones and you know the nice thing about Ethiopian blacks they're not 20,000 a carat like some of the Australian blacks you know, so they are a, a stone that you can afford in a black. And the black, the advantage of black is it, it shows the colors more dramatically. You know, it's why we show opals on black paper or, um, you know, put them in a black box because opals show best on black. So if the body color is black, it shows its color better. So this is 18.8 uh, .8 carat. Uh, a little over a hundred a carat is a sale price, and with fifteen percent off, it's um, where are we at here? Fourteen hundred and thirty-eight bucks, maybe. I think that's right. So, so this uh, pretty stone. Um, you know, the color is somewhat between what the video is and what the picture is. The by by base color. You know, it really has some dramatic colors in it. You know. White and the light. Yeah. Yeah, it's not bad. You know, the, the problem with our lighting setup, you know, these opals, when you photograph them, they're much better when the lights are far away from them. Uh, that's why sunlight is just spectacular for these opals, you know, because uh, a close light like this makes the color pattern just kind of uh, mute out and fade in a little bit. Whereas if you get the light further away, these these patterns, the, the borders of them become much more, much sharper. You know, but this has nice color, kind of uh, varies a little bit. Uh, you know, you get some beautiful green on, on this side and then such a mix of color on the opposite. 
to put the video back up. So it's, uh, again, it's 18.80 carat, uh, you know, and uh, ends up uh, well under $100 a carat with the sale price. You know, it's a big opal, make a nice pendant, uh, and, and probably not too big for a ring for some of you. I need to wear a t-shirt. <laughs> nice. well, I don't see you in t-shirts on often. <laughs> but you and Mike have the same type of shirt on right now. <laughs> uh, um, we have a question. Yes. So I think um, this question kind of pops up every time we do Opal, but um, Blake was wondering... Do you have any trouble with um, Ethiopian opal having lots of cracks or fractures? Um, only when you cut. Michael had a problem cutting this week with one. You know, it, uh, when I originally started cutting, it was one out of three would crack on me. You know, and, and they crack either while you're cutting or during the first day. After that, they don't crack. You know, it, it's a very stable material after it's cut. Um, these days, either I'm better or my supplier is better because if I have one out of 20 stones crack on me, that's about it. You know, just uh, much lower problems than, than it was. And I, I'm sure it's probably my supplier. He's gotten better at buying from the right sources. <clears throat> so very little problem with cracking. Um, again, it, it's 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 right at the beginning when when you start cutting um you can lose a stone but after that i mean all the stones i've had you know maybe one or two out of 500 stones has cracked after the first day of cutting you know they're just very stable after that you know they don't craze because of the uh hydrophane character uh, they like water. Um, crazing is caused by drying up and, and cracking. Um, uh, and, and Ethiopian just doesn't have that problem. You know, many of the Australian mines will have that issue. Um, as I've told you before, my f one of my first experiences cutting opal is I spent a whole week cutting them and, and every one of them cracked on me. You know, they craze, which is uh, very fine crack lines through them. Um, so uh, these Ethiopians just have very little issue after they're cut. Yeah. So this is 1990 bucks and 15% uh, off that with the coupon code FALL15. And um, so we, um, I got a message. We have somebody um, that is interested in that tanzanite that you just heated up, the nine, or 28 carat. Uh -huh. oh, he wanted to know if, can you put it next to a dime or do we have any change laying around? Just to get a better <laughs> idea of the, we could always email him, I guess, later. But uh, uh, banana. <laughs> banana, that's kind of, <laughs> all right. How about we put it in my teeth? <laughs> Yeah, I'm sure we have a coin. Yeah, I guess. Okay. So it's uh, millimeter wise, it's uh, 17 millimeters. Nickel. Nickel so. work. So here's a nickel. Whoop. So it's not as big as a nickel. Almost. It's a good size. How about a penny? <laughs> people know How about what pennies, a dime? What size pennies are? <laughs> Whoop! <laughs> here's here's uh, oh oh. <laughs> okay, that's good size. Yeah. So similar to that. I don't know what a penny is millimeter. I don't have a gauge. Yeah, I do have. So it's 17 millimeter and a penny is 19 millimeter. 25 millimeters to an inch. So, I mean, it's a good size stone. You know, it's... Was that good? That'll 
And next we have a, another opal, yeah, but this is uh, made into a piece of jewelry. This is actually a, a completely natural, you know, this is as I bought this piece of uh, opal rough. Um, you know, many times you'll cut an opal and the piece of rough looked better than what the finished product is. And we've talked about uh, making them up natural and, and that's what we've done here. So still has some of the... Um, Some of the parent rock, but but the colors were so dramatic. I mean, there's we did no polishing, nothing. Just took the piece of rough and and mounted in this fourteen carat setting, just because the colors are just so great on it. I mean, huge flashes. Yeah, just beautiful colors. Yeah, and that that's the natural surface of the opal as it was found by the miner. So this is all set in 14 karat gold, just a handmade basket and, and bale for this piece. So just kind of a cool piece, uh, weighs, the opal weighs uh, 20, almost 24 carats. Um, and again, set in 14 karat gold. So there's quite a bit of gold in this. You know, this was done by Margot Corley, who is in our shop. She's been with us for a long time, and she just does some really, really great work with her hands. And, I mean, she's a remarkable setter. She's just a remarkable jeweler all the way around. And uh, she's made a couple pieces for us that we'll show you tonight, and this is one of them. So this is 1990, um, and it, it uh, with 15 off is $1,690. And for the amount of 14 karat gold in this piece, you know, I think it's a really good value and, and, a, and a big stone. I mean, and the colors are, are just about as good as you're going to see in any opal that we've cut or, you know, just really just beautiful colors. You know, and it, it's, you, you get big flashes of color like this, and, and that's what makes an opal more valuable. You know, just these huge, you know, almost a harlequin pattern. A little rougher look, but just a beautiful, beautiful color, and it would just make a nice wearable piece. So big piece, you know, it's over an inch long, uh, probably an inch and a half long. It could be either. Yeah, definitely a manly look. Or good for a woman. Set in white gold. Again, it's a 20, almost 24 carats. Uh, the total weight on the piece is almost 12 grams. All right, and up next, this one comes from Mineral Mike. And it's uh, one of the new Megalodon teeth he's got in. This is, how big is this one, Mike? Well, it's uh, four, and a half four and a half inch. So Good size tooth. Measures from the tip of the blade to the, uh, to the top ah. the corner of the root. And something that... Uh, I've only recently learned is this is not the front of the tooth. It doesn't go this way. It actually is this direction. So this is actually the front of the tooth, although it looks better this way. So a nice big tooth. The uh, megalodons are 2.6 million mm -hmm. to right. 26 million years. 23, 23 million. So they actually lived when our ancestors were here right we go back we go back to we go back to 4.6 million is yeah. what we've yeah so our early hominids uh, lived while megalodon lived 
Anamensis. Yeah. <laughs> so that'd be a, a scary thing to see. Yeah, because these were 60 foot long? Yeah. Yeah, up to 60 foot long. I think so. And the teeth can be as big as seven inches. So a nice tooth for 269 bucks, less 15%, uh, which puts it at uh, about $228. So we find these here in the States uh, from Florida up to North Carolina. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So they're both in the rivers and, and out in the, in the ocean, they, they find uh, these teeth. Uh, what's next there, Mike? So this is uh, one of Michael's first cuts. It's not his first stone he's ever cut, but uh, it's, one it's one of the few. You know, so he cut this opal into this emerald cut. Um, and it weighs 10 carat, you know, and this is Michael's favorite pattern, these little <laughs> pin fire patterns. Yeah, but, but it's beautiful stone, really beautiful opal, you know, and, and. So if someone buys this, it's like buying like a, like one of the first Rembrandts, you yeah, know, it could they be. got in early. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you know? Michael could be famous down the line. Yeah, you can yeah. say, you know. Do they get an autograph? Like, with it too? <laughs> no, it's a really good cut, and you love those colors, don't you? I do love those colors. Tight pattern. Tight yep. pattern. Very yeah, yeah. Let me see if I can. Whoop. If we're in focus there. Which one? I don't either. That's better. Well, it still shows shows the pattern better. You know, but just the color throughout this piece. You know, again, great pendant or ring. It's not too big for a ring and just color everywhere. Yeah, you know, we like the faceted stones. They sell for us, and, and we're going to do a lot more faceting. You know, I've gotten a little quicker at faceting opal, so it's not quite so time-consuming because you can I can cab a stone in half hour. You know, faceting is still two, three hours. Um, I think Michael took maybe six it's hours, but he'll get long. he'll get he'll get quicker. You know, so um, so a really nice stone. It's a, a ten carat, uh, priced at a hundred dollars a carat, and take uh, fifteen percent off. That takes you down to eighty five dollars a carat, eight hundred and fifty bucks in this really really fine opal that just make a beautiful ring. You know, we've done some men's rings, particularly with with some of these emerald cuts, and done real well with them. I think Michael has one himself. I think both Mike and Jeff have a men's ring with opal don't oh, you yeah. yeah so i used to have one but uh not sure what happened to mine i think i dropped it on a tile floor which is <laughs> we won't go into that um but chipped it a little bit so be be careful uh, over tile when you're uh, opening your opals or any stone you know tile is pretty merciless on on gems particularly when they're in a a one ounce mounting with a lot of weight behind it. That's what happened to mine. Took a little chip out of it, but it didn't fit the, the ring afterwards. So now I'm ringless for this time, but uh, I'll work on another opal because I love the looks of opals and I never got more compliments than, than uh, when I wore an opal ring. And I hear that from, from women that wear opal pendants you know, there's so many people just uh, asking them about their piece and, and making comments about it. So it, uh, it's just a, a remarkable thing, much because the size of the Ethiopian opals that are available, uh, much bigger than any other 
sources like Australia and you know you get a bigger stone for much less money out of Ethiopia a question there Jeff yes um, so someone just had a question about uh, garnet is there a way that you can tell if you have asterism 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 a s t e r i s m asterism uh-huh. in garnet rough he had heard some garnet from india have it well there's garnet from is it idaho yeah i think so uh, that that has star star garnet is is uh um is seen and and the way to tell is what's the auto product stp um, you get STP and, and you put a drop on top of it and, and it'll, if there's a star there, it'll help show it. Uh, the advantage STP, it has a, such a thick viscosity, it'll, it'll sit on top of it. And, and if you put a straight, strong light or go out in the sun with it, it'll help you determine whether there's asterism in a stone. You know, that's the only way I know. Um, the, yeah, that's, that's the best way to do it. You know, you, you can either, if it's really rough, you may need to polish it a little bit and, um, you know, but, uh, but the STP is, is the trick that I, I'm aware of. Okay. So, yeah. At your local auto store. Huh. So. So asterism, that's just a star? Yeah. Yeah. It's caused by inclusions that are within the stone that run in three directions. Um, and the asterism, you know, the, the silk will cross like this and this. And like, a, you know, if you take a bowl of a thread out in the sun, uh, it'll produce a line across the top of, of those lines running across that. It'll, it'll be, they'll be perpendicular to the lines of the thread, and it'll actually produce like a cat's eye. You know, and you have three different directions in, in star stones, and those will produce uh, uh, perpendicular lines to the inclusions that are within the stone. Hmm. So you see it in, oh, you'll see it in sapphire particularly, of course. Um, see it in uh, barrels, you know, uh, more cat's eyes, but um, rose quartz. Um, and garnet, you know, so it may occur in many, many species, just, just a rare occurrence in most stones, but, um, you know, most common in, in sapphire. So. STP. STP. So again, that's a stone from Mineral Mike. Uh, get one of his first cut stones, and it's really well done. It's it's approved by me. I've checked it out, and and uh, he did a nice job on it. Uh, I think he had to go over it once after I looked at it, but uh, finally finally got got it right. Yeah, yeah. It's 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 not easy to see the scratches in these opals. Very, very difficult to uh, tell whether your polish is good. You know, just the nature of the surface of this material, just hard to, hard to look at it with a loop and see whether it's still scratched or not. So it takes very close observation of it. And, you know, you got to get used to looking at the surface of the opal to, to see the scratches that are there because you didn't finish polishing it, you know. So... After he went over it a second time, it came out very, very nice. And up next is uh, another tanzanite. Uh, this one is dramatically blue. I mean, really, really has a, a strong blue color to it. You know, even more so than, than it's pictured. That's about as purple as you're ever going to see it. You know, if you're looking for a, a blue stone, I think this is a really, really good choice. Uh, 
you know, and that's something I've seen recently too. Is is more stones that that are more to the blue color. A lot of people ask for it because uh, there's quite a few websites that push blue as being the ultimate color, you know. But there's typically so few all blue stones that you know the Tanzanite business would never be where it's at if we we thought that uh, just blue stones were important in tanzanite it's the blue purple that we know of tanzanite and that's that's typically where the market's at but a lot of people interested in blue and this is one that has a, a really strong blue color you know these stones will change significantly from one light to another uh, in incandescent light they'll be more purple and in daylight they'll show more blue you know but this one's going to show significantly more blue than other stones you know, it's a really great stone, weighs 7 carat 18, uh, 48.50 with 15% off is uh, 41.22. So again, about $570 a carat for the, the size. Uh, nickel, dime, penny. <laughs> I lost my nickel and dime. Here's my penny. So that's a seven carat compared to a a penny. <laughs> you won't buy it for a penny, but for penny saved, penny earned. And then So really nice stone, nice clean stone, um, basically flawless stone and and just top color. Uh, the overall quality rating, which I probably have on it, is a 944. And uh, that's a, a new system we've started using for grading our tanzanites, uh, which based on the color in both daylight and incandescent because they are significantly different in many stones. Not so much in this one because it's more to the blue, but the stones that are mixed blue and purple, there is a big difference in the color in different lights. So we've started grading under two different lights um, just to give you an idea of what you're going to see in the different lights because it can be so different because tanzanite can be amethyst purple and incandescent and go to sapphire blue. I mean, it can be a complete color change. You know, typically it's a mix of the two colors, but um, so there's a significant difference and that's why we've started grading the two different colors separately. Um, and then we grade for the, the clarity of the stone and also uh, break down the cut into four different categories and, and actually grade completely on the, uh, the, the quality of the cut and then give them an overall quality grade, which this one is 944, which is a very high grading for, for tanzanite. Oh, question, please, yes. Jeff. So I think this is back to the Opal of Michaels. Uh -huh. um, I know some some of the newer people don't know, but you started, I think, a couple months now. You've been using a different machine uh, for cutting, but they were right. uh, wondering what machine Michael is using now. Uh, what did we cut that on? He used the facet is, is what he cut that on. I'm cutting on the Ultratech, um, the Ultratech's my new machine, uh, the Facet's my previous machine. Both great machines. I'm very happy with either, would be happy to use both. Um, but the reason that I've moved to the Ultratech is because of the problems with Facet being there's no parts available. They're, they're no longer manufactured, so... Um, I looked for a machine of, of similar quality to that because Facet was a great machine. I'm very, very happy with it. Um, but the, Alt, the, the Ultratech um, has similar qualities of the Facet as far as really being very, very accurate. And, and I have a future with it because uh, it is still manufactured, been manufactured for 55 years. And uh, 
uh, because they are a company that is more in more than just faceting machines. They're into scientific equipment. Um, they're not relying on just the, the faceting business to stay in business. So uh, they're much more likely to be around when you need help uh, than all my other machines. I mean, there's nobody to help me with my other machines. And, and when you have a problem like I've had with the uh, facet, uh, it was down for over a year and a half before somebody walked in my store and, and was able to provide me with a part that I needed to, to get it back in, in working order. So this is why, uh, for me, Ultratech is, is my future and, and uh, just because it's a, just a very, really well-built machine and when I need parts and service, it's available, so. And up next is another opal pendant, uh, again, by Margot Corley uh, in our shop. Uh, this piece is not uh, natural like the last one. It is one that I, I did uh, polish um, just as a, a kind of an undulating freeform opal. But it has been completely polished. It's just a just a preform shape that that kind of followed what the rough was. Again, these lights being so close just makes the the color patches just kind of dissolve into each other. But really pretty piece, and and this kind of shows. Uh, these are rubies with it, and a purple sapphire is the other stone. So on these, in the opals, we make solid backs on them. This, again, is 14 karat gold. And the solid back keeps the skin oils uh, away from the opal uh, because oils uh, can get absorbed into these opals and have some effect on the color. So we, we give it a solid back to, to prevent any issues. It's a kind of a unique piece. In uh, 1950, uh, the stone weighs 10.60 carats. Uh, again, the, uh, you know, it's like a, a third of a carat in the purple sapphire. And uh, actually the others are rubies, not sapphires. So 15% off with the coupon code FALL15. It's a nice size pendant. You know, and again, this is what gets these seen as these bigger sizes. And up next is a uh, tanzanite I just cut recently. Um, this is, uh, the stone's not completely clean. Uh, the video will show you the inclusions more than they're visible in real life. Uh, this is a stone that weighs 12 karat 80. Um, I just haven't taken the time to recut it because it, it's pretty as it is. Uh, I can recut it to a 10 karat and it'll be a clean stone, which is probably what will happen. But we decided to offer it uh, as a 12 karat 80 um, because, as you see in this picture, very, very difficult to see the inclusions that are in it. Again, they can be cut out, and I'll end up with a 10 karat. Um, and we've actually dropped the price on this a little bit more uh, because as a 10 karat, it's going to end up about this price. Uh, 550 a carat, so 5500. But I think, do you know what the price we dropped it to? Yeah, it's on the website, uh, 5175. So 5175 on the website, uh, which will take it to 5175 times about uh, $4,400 divided by 13. So I don't know, it's, it's under 400 a carat. 
Yeah, but again, the inclusions you see in the video, it's very difficult to see uh, naked eye. You know, this... So again, a, a, a nice emerald cut, uh, which shows the color really, really well in the stone. So if it doesn't sell like this next show, you'll see it cut to a 10 carat probably, and because uh, those inclusions are just really near the surface. Often I'll cut them right away, but uh, when I looked at it, I mean, it's so hard to, to see the inclusions uh, that thought we'd offer it uh, at a lower price. It's a good size stone, too. Yeah, yeah, and it's, and it's big. And, you know, when you recut it, it's going to get a little smaller, but um, I am estimating at least 10 carat finished weight as a clean stone. It's just going to be a little thinner and... You know, not quite so big, and it'll be more expensive. So offer it as, as it is, and, uh, you know, if somebody's interested, uh, because when you wear it, it'll just be so hard to see the inclusions, and nobody else is going to see what's in it. Um, like I say, it'll, my assumption is I'll be recutting it and, and uh, offering it again as a 10 carat. You know, as a 10 carat, it'll be 5500 probably instead of a thousand dollars less as a as a 13 carat so you're getting a better deal with a better stone or a bigger stone yeah and it always can be recut you know but our next stone is a pretty unusual garnet you know the color is just amazing on it you know this this is the color that people call them purple garnets or just because there's a little purple secondary to the to the violet red that's in it you know this stone not a flawless stone but typically these colors are not without inclusions you know and that's this not the best representation of the color really the the picture and video of it are, are much better because it's it's intense like this a fuchsia or you know there's a lot of violet to the the color you know you can see some of the, there's crystals in the stone again you know these videos show a close-up view under bright light and you know will show the inclusions more but uh, as a wearable piece they're very difficult to see the inclusions that are in it but this color is so rare in garnets you know, it's just, you almost never see this kind of color. You know, it's that, that purple secondary to the, the deep uh, road-like color with a purple secondary to it. You know, it just makes it a really dramatic look that uh, you just rarely see in garnets. You know, this is a four, just over four carat stone, $600 uh, is the price. Um, Less fifteen percent is five hundred and ten bucks. So, unique cut again. It's a you know it's a it's a brilliant style pavilion. Uh, Barian style uh, is is what I typically do on them and a, a step cut crown. You know this comes to us from Tanzania, and again it's a color that you rarely rarely see in these garnets. Oh, sorry, Mike. <laughs> I fooled you. And our next, yep, our next question, question is, yep, <laughs> keeping you on your toes tonight, Steve. Um, I'm sure this has been asked before, but we get new viewers each two weeks. Um, they want to know. Grace wants to know what your favorite stone to work with is it's because they're all so dang pretty. Hmm. Mm. People are going to go back in the previous videos and, <laughs> and just see if I fact see if check I repeat you. The, uh, 
it's easier to tell you the ones I hate, but, uh, <laughs> you know, like appetites and, you know, um, well, it, it, tanzanite is my favorite to work with um, just because it is such a change uh, when you cut them. You know, it, it, uh, you know you're cutting this brownish looking stone and heat it up and it's such a huge change in, lo- in the look and the beauty of the stone. Um, I say it's my favorite it's my most rewarding stone after you've cut it but cutting them is often an issue because you do have to heat them Uh, you have to work to get the inclusions out that uh, in another stone maybe you could leave it in Um, but when you heat stones and they have inclusions those inclusions tend to expand and, and they cause fractures in the stone so it's usually a lot of work to to get the stone to a state that's completely clean uh, that you need to be when you're heating. So heating's always an issue. So I I do like tanzanite, but uh, probably garnets are um, some of my favorites. You know, just the variety of color and and they're easy to polish. You know, they're just a much easier stone to, to polish than other gems. So uh, garnets I like a lot always have enjoyed garnets and you know between that and barrel would be another stone that's easy to polish but the garnets are are just a much more beautiful stone when finished so thank you I don't know we'll see if anybody <laughs> remembers what I said last time um, That's but color, it, color change diaspora color change diaspora yeah not my favorite <laughs> I've never cut it either, you know, so, but it is a problem to cut, as people have told me. Yeah, but. And uh, did we, you know, we didn't do this one yet. What, what's up next? The zircon? So this is a, a smaller zircon. I don't usually cut them down to this size, but um, just a, again. They're just really a pretty, pretty color. You know, this one comes from Singita, I believe, in, in Tanzania. This rough is from my last trip to Tanzania. And again, you just look at the brilliance of, of these zircons, and, you know, it's just a second to none. I mean, almost a diamond-like brilliance. You know, this one, step-cut crown and a, a brilliant-style pavilion. I cut a 16 mains. Uh, pavilion in this and a step cut crown which is cut I, I, I've done several times uh, we did it in a garnet I think that was the one of the reddit uh, gone viral wasn't it a six carat uh, yeah I thought it was a tanzanite that you did it was a tanzanite yeah that was much like this so I, I like this cut it just works real well you know, and this is a two, a three carat zircon. So 450 and 15% off with uh, fall 15 uh, puts it at 383 bucks. And next stone is uh, quite an unusual stone. Um, these fancy tanzanites um, are generally exceedingly rare. Uh, this is a, kind of a violetish pink color, if that's such a thing. Pinkish, what did I call it? Uh, a pinkish violet, or, you know, it's really a, an odd odd coloration you know pinks are the one of the rarest of the colors in tanzanite and this is kind of a pink and in violet so unique stone really nicely cut um all these uh fancy tanzanites 
um, bring good price in Tanzania just because they're so rare. Um, you know, they range from peach colors we've had and uh, pinks, solid pinks, and, and this just kind of a, a mix of pink and purple. So really well-cut clean stone. You know, often these uh, fancy colors, because of the rarity, are cut with inclusions because you don't have to heat them. Um, so you can leave things in them and and not be an issue. But this one's a, it's a nice clean stone. You know, it's not flawless, but it's uh, just very clean. And bright. Yeah, yeah, it's really bright stone. So 1590 and 15% off with fall 15. Uh, and you'll have one of the rarest tanzanites on the planet. Other colors of the fancies come in? Uh, greens. We have greens and yellows. Um, you know, the peach colors like the, the, the zircon, imperial zircon, that kind of color. We see uh, purples. Um, that's pretty much most of what I've seen. Yellow. Yeah, yellows. Yellows, not the most popular, but uh, they've had some vivid greens in the past. You know, most of the greens available now are lighter, kind of bluish green. Um, but th but the pinks are the highest demand, the highest priced of the the fancy colors in Tanzanite. And our next piece is another megalodon tooth. And this is a, a really special one because of not only the finish that it has, uh, which it looks like it's polished, but it's not, and the serrated edge, which is so sharp you could probably use it as a letter opener. It's just a really sharp or a, or a steak knife. You know, as as the megalodon would have used it as, you know, so the value of a lot of these are, are based somewhat on the serration on the edge. And this just has a really, really nice serration. Uh, I don't know if we can get a focus on that. Yeah, you can see it. You know, they just don't typically survive uh, this edge just because of the, the vast amount of movement, if they're in the rivers or in the ocean, you know, it just wears it down. And you can see the finish on it. You know, a lot of these are polished, but this one is natural, just like this. That's the left there is complete. That's this here. Yeah. And then the root so. is really nice root, complete, full track. So this is the root, and it's just nice and clean. It's just really, really a top quality piece. So this one's from Georgia. This is from Georgia. So it'd be interesting to go find these, but typically they find them in rivers and you know, they're going down with scuba equipment uh, down fairly deep because it probably they accumulate in the deepest part of the river. And when they're looking for them, it is totally dark. They see nothing. They're only searching by hand and by feel to find these. And I think it's pretty dangerous being in the rivers and, you know, just all the trees and stuff down there and yeah, so they earn their money finding these. So somebody earlier when we were looking at the, the first tooth was talking about um, Malta. So I guess Malta is asking Prince George of England to return a dino tooth given to him by Sir Richard Attenborough. Malta is saying it's their national treasure. Really? Yeah. Heard of that? Anybody? Yeah. No. This is recently or this is like it Sounds like it's recently. I don't know. E V is it recently? What kind of tooth? Oh, it's a dino tooth. But since we're talking <laughs> about <laughs> talking about the uh, dino yeah, I don't know. It's, it's their national animal. treasure. It's, it's an animal tooth. <laughs> All right. Hopefully it's not in my collection. <laughs> <laughs> All right.
I think you're good. Yeah. Uh, it, I guess it was announced this week. Yeah. That's sad news. Those people from Malta always going after the dino teeth. Uh, <laughs> What's next? <laughs> What's next? So a really nice Beglodon tooth, four hundred and eighty nine bucks and fifteen percent off uh, with fall fifteen. Yeah, this this comes to you from uh, this is on Mineral Mike, um, which is Michael's website for crystals and you know fossils. You know, it's also it is on more gems, but uh, you'll find this and and more Megalodon teeth on mineralmike.com. And up next is uh, was a challenge for me trying to match a pair of tanzanites. Um, this was comes from a, a really shallow piece of rough uh, that you couldn't cut one stone out of. So uh, you know when you're cutting the how big you can cut a stone is much dependent on the depth of the rough. So this was just a very flat piece of rough. So I decided to slice it in half and and cut a match pair out of it. Um, which these come out real nice. Uh, we're calling them epaulets, which is, uh, you know, it's almost a half moon, but, uh, you know, it's a, a little different shape. So this uh, cut matches pretty closely in size, and the, the style of cut is, is identical. You know, they're not flawless. They're SI1 clarity. Uh, there are a few inclusions in it, but nothing that you see with the naked eye easily. You know, so these would make a, a really good pair for um, a three-stone ring. Uh, you could do a pair of earrings with it. You know, that, uh, I think what I would end up doing with it is a three-stone ring. And, you know, I've been thinking about uh, maybe putting it with peridot or trying to find what color works best with it. You could put it with a, another tanzanite, but I think there might be some other cutting com color combinations that may work better. You know, so you need a, a, probably a center stone that's six, seven, eight carats to, to handle the length of these because these are almost 11 millimeters long. Total weight is 6.37 carats. Uh, price twenty nine ninety less fifteen percent, uh, so they end up about three hundred ninety seven dollars a carat. Just a, a really challenging for a cutter to try and match these, and when you're done, you hope the color matches. They did come out of the same piece of rough, so the odds were good. Uh, although when I finished cutting them, the colors of the two natural pieces actually look different, but they heated to almost identical color. So this is something in the future you'll see uh, we will make an interesting ring out of if we don't sell it before that, um, because it, it will make something completely unique, and you know, I'm kind of excited to, to put something together, and I'm thinking Peridot would be a really good center, or maybe Zircon, I don't know. You know, we've done really well with color combinations, um, so this should make something pretty unique. So I think that's uh, that's it for us tonight. Um, oh, except for a few questions. So I'll go through a few that we missed earlier, okay. and if anybody has any questions... Jump on that chat. This is the time to ask Steve any late night questions <laughs> about jewelry and gems. Um, have you ever faceted a Hessenite garnet? Yes. Yeah, many, many years ago, I, I did quite a bit. Uh, Hessenite, uh, some of the best were from the Jeffreys Bind in Canada, which I, I still see people coming up with things from that mine. I, I don't know if it's still operating, but um, it was, uh, what, what did they buy in there? Jeffries? Well, anyway, um, they had some of the best because um, 
a lot of the material, particularly that comes out of Sri Lanka, has um, just a, um, an interference pattern in the crystal that, that makes it look like a heat wave uh, within the stone. But the Jeffrey's Mine material didn't have that same issue that you find from the Sri Lanka material. Sri Lanka produces bigger stones, and I cut quite a few from Sri Lanka. That was back in the 90s, probably, 1990s, and so quite a while ago. So we don't see Hessenite very often, um, but but it is another pretty stone that has that uh, little bit of look like the imperial zircons, that kind of color. You know, kind of a peachy color, a little like Malaya garnets and and uh, and the Imperial Zircons. Okay. So, again, an easy cutter, you know, like, like uh, all garnets. You know, just a nice, easy stone to polish. All right. Another have you cut question. This comes from Gems and Prospecting Tasmania. Have you ever faceted a Tasmanian sapphire? No. Never seen a Tasmanian sapphire. So, no, I haven't. Um, okay. What more can I say? <laughs> do they mine them? Yeah, what's, what's the color? I mean, do they come, are they blue? I don't, I don't know if you've seen them. I, I, I have not seen them. So... Is it new? Is it old? Not sure. Not aware. No. Yeah. Ask or uh, give us those answers if you're still on. Um, there's another question here about um, either seeing or cutting or what you think about. Oh, uh, it's Japanese. Can you finish my statement, Steve? I'm looking for it here. Okay. Where's my control F? <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, Japanese rainbow garnet. Well, you're coming up with some new ones on me. Japanese rainbow garnet. Don't know that one either. Sounds cool. Yeah. Yeah. Japanese rainbow garnet. Wow. Yeah. I don't know. I feel like Jap Jap Japan doesn't produce a whole lot. Yeah. Japan produces almost nothing. Hmm. Uh, gem wise uh, I don't know I know nothing there other than pearl Japanese rainbow garnet now, if you have information on it always interested you know, send it to us and um, yeah, I'm unaware of that okay so you know people should just like you know how people do review videos they should just send you rough from like other countries and you cut it and you know you get to keep it, but. <laughs> <laughs> Send me rough. Uh, yeah. Send me rough. I get to keep it. <laughs> Send me some questions I can answer. Yeah. So um, the Tasmania um, Gems and Prospecting, uh, he said it's the colors are blue, pink, purple, and yellow. Okay. So kind of answers that one. Send me pictures. Yeah. No, I'm not aware of it. Okay. So um, there's a question back here, and I know you've talked about this before, but with tanzanite, um, how safe uh, wearing it in rings? Um, I mean, over time you're going to scratch it. I mean, they they don't ever. I, I rarely, if ever, see major damage. You know, the it's just surface scratching. So, you know, given 10 years of time wearing a stone fairly regular, you're going to need to repolish. Um, but, uh, again, no major damage. And, you know, when I repolish a whole crown of a stone, uh, you know, a 5-carat stone ends up a 4-carat 60 or a 4-carat 70. So the weight loss is insignificant, and the size loss of the stone is, is virtually none. So even when you repolish the whole crown of a stone, it still goes back in the same mounting. So uh, very little problems with it. You know, you just got to realize if you're going to wear a, a tanzanite every day, you are going to scratch it. 
you know, but major damage is, is generally not the issue. Okay. Uh, sorry, going through questions here. Um, let's see. Uh, there's another one back here. Have you ever considered working with rainbow included quartz? Not sure if you know. Um, well, if, if it's included, I don't want it, <laughs> you know, okay. I have to deal with inclusions enough. I'm not going to pick a stone that's even named included, you know, um, it's just dealing with inclusions is always an issue. Uh, where do you put them? And, you know, I'm not really familiar with that material either. Never seen it. Uh, don't know what the nature of it is. Um, but uh, often, you know, inclusions that are fractures within stones can produce a rainbow effect off the inclusion itself, uh, just the way it, 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 it uh, alters the path of the light and, and just will, the, uh, an open fracture will reflect a rainbow, and I'm assuming that's what he's talking about. Although it's something that, again, I, I haven't seen the material and, you know, Again, if it's, it's if it's called included, I don't <laughs> I don't want it. You know, no. I want something clean. <laughs> you know, I, I'm tired of dealing with inclusions, and I dealt with a lot of them this this last couple of weeks, and you know, having to having to struggle with a piece of rough because it causes a lot more problems for a cutter uh, dealing with inclusions. Again, particularly with heat heat treatment and. You know, heat treatment and inclusions don't go together. Okay, so with the, you just mentioned heat treatment. Um, with fancy colored tanzanite, if you heated it, would it be the blue-purple? Uh, I've only heated one, and it uh, didn't do what I hoped for. And it was a pink. It was a pink, had some brown in it. Um, typically... It actually had yellow in it, which makes it look a little brown. And I'd hope that heating it would uh, drive off the yellow and just leave pink, but it turned purple. So, which is wasn't a big plus for the stone because pink is really what you want. Um, so my experience with heating these fancies has, to this point, not been good. Um, You'd, and and with heating, you know, until you do it once or twice on, on a particular color, you just don't know what you're going to get. And so heating is, is more often a negative and, than it is a positive, you know. So uh, the first time you do it is often cost you money, you know. And that's the case, you know, you'll see this stone that's purple on our website. It's a trillion that'll be on Tanzanite jewelry designs. And it started out as pink. It was just a little off pink and and it just looked like uh, it has yellow in it. And in blue Tanzanite, you drive off the yellow and and uh, it's, e it's easy to drive off. You know, at 1100 degrees, the, the yellow disappears and I'd hope for just leaving the pink, but it turned to purple, so. Okay. Um, next question is um, probably a new buyer or lover of gemstones, but they want to know any advice you can give to someone looking to buy gemstones. Um, she says, seems that they're, they can be very cheap or very expensive, and she can't always tell the difference on you know, which one to purchase. Well, most often it's... Uh you know the the price is more related to quality and you know it is difficult to uh, particularly online tell what the quality of a stone is um, but most of the stones that are really cheap or there's a reason for it you know um, you're really just looking to find a supplier you can trust and and uh, because there are so many bad deals in this business, I've had my share of them. And buying online um, is a very risky situation. You know, uh, many of the things that I've done online, particularly in the past, you know, I've, I uh, have had a few issues where I actually had to, to sue to get my money back and, 
you know, just total misrepresentation of stones, which is just so common in this business, you know, fakes. And, you know, that's the biggest issue you're going to have is not only is it worth money, is it actually real, you know, and is actually what's represented uh, what you're going to get. You know, we've had a recent uh, issue where somebody's taken our pieces and uh, offering them online just taking our pictures and putting them online and in totally to scam people. You know, I don't know what his scam is. He's going to get your money and just be gone. I don't well, know what, I'm, I'm what guessing what's going to happen is he shows you, you know, our piece. Then maybe he recreates it with a either a fake yeah. or, you know, a worse stone. Yeah. So he's just putting our, he's an Indian company. Yeah. On Etsy. And uh, he's just, yeah. it's on Etsy and he's taking our pieces and, and just showing them online. And then, you know, he'll recreate them uh, there because you buy Tanzanite and in India and, and have mountings made and, and just make a, a piece that's uh, similar or you know, I'm sure lower quality that uh, he can make some money on it there and just total misrepresentation, you know. So, and that, it's just just so common, you know. It, it just, you have to be totally careful, you know. And, and again, we talked about the, the diamond issue right now with the, the synthetic diamonds and how much of that is on Etsy and eBay. I can only imagine because... You know, for most, it's totally unidentifiable. It is a diamond. They're, you know, synthetics, and, and they're, um, you can buy them for a third of the price of naturals. So, you know, it's just another place that uh, the cheats are going to get to you. You know, so not only do you not know that what is shown is the actual piece you're going to get, you don't even know if it's real. And, you know, and, and so often you're going to just buy something, and it's just not going to be real. Yeah, so it's a, a total trust issue in this business, and you know you just have to trust who you deal with. Otherwise, you're gonna, you know, you're gonna make one good buy, and then the next one is just gonna be totally fraudulent, and you know. Mm -hmm. All right. On a happier note, <laughs> um, so uh, one person wants to know: you talked about it for a while. You went on vacation. When are you going to do the video on the Ultra Tech? As far as the cutting videos? Yes. Yeah, well, it, it's been an issue because, you know, our business, even though COVID is here, we're up 25% over last year, which was a big year. We have no more employees than we did then, so it's been a problem keeping up with business and, and uh, you know, doing these videos. It'll you know, we'll put in 20, 30 hours into producing this video. We're, we're closer, but we're not there yet. You know, um, these shows have, they take a lot of time and, you know, just having a time issue and trying to figure out how to squeeze it all in and, and get it done. And now Christmas is coming and business will be there. And yeah, we'll, we'll figure it out because there are some beautiful stones I need to cut. I mean, the topaz, that's a thousand carat. I need to cut that. And, you know, yeah. Yeah. And we, we've been closer because I'm, I, I have to get the new machine mounted and I've started that. I, I, one of my older machines that uh, took up one of the desk, I finally pulled it out this week and, and uh, going to mount the Ultratech and, you know, we're going to try and do the video at home. So we're moving towards it. Uh, we're getting closer. And, um, you know, hopefully in the next couple of weeks that will happen and we'll, we'll get some videos on. And, you know, it, uh, we're trying to, to get our um, sound and, and, and video better and, you know, trying to figure out how to set it up and, um, and, and just make a much better production out of it. So we're getting closer, but it's it just taking time. So. All right. Um, there was a response about the, the Japanese rainbow garnets. Um, he said that finding a fasted one's very rare. I guess most are tumbled um, because the rainbow colors are somewhat surface deep, he believes. Hmm. So, um, 
He's only, I think, uh, he may have tumbled one, but he's only seen him tumbled. Okay. Yeah, I'm unaware of him, so. Uh, I think, uh, I think that's about it. Yes. Okay. All, All right. right. All right, folks. Remember, shop online at moregems.com. Uh, as well as subscribe to us on YouTube at More Gems. Uh, that's going to do it for us today. I want to thank you for joining us. Sign up for alerts for when we go live. Also, check out our video links and info at the bottom of the stream. Uh, until next time, I'm Steve Moriarty. Keep on gemming. Thank you.